Super Ultroid monitors have been about for a little while now, so we're starting to see cheaper offerings crop up and a lot of them hitting the used market, especially 1080p ones. I actually picked this Samsung one up from Facebook Marketplace for £250, that's around $300, you, you really can't complain at that price. Here's the question you probably want the answer to though, should you buy one? Not them, not you, you. Let's find out. Hey guys, my name's Aki, and today we're going to be exploring if a super ultra-wide monitor is right. I've been using this Samsung one for about a month now, and I'm getting pretty comfortable with it. And prior to this, I used to run a three-monitor setup, and I've run a two-monitor setup as well, which is what most people are trying to switch from. We're going to outline some general pros and cons that I haven't seen spoken about as much when it comes to super ultra-wides, and then we're going to split down into user-specific categories as well. Student or general productivity, gamer, and streamer. Each category has some unique wants and needs, but of course, if you're a mixture of two, maybe even all three, then all the points are Now, who is this weird British guy telling me if this is the right monitor for me? Without tooting my own horn too much, I have a first class degree, Fortnite earnings, and I've dabbled in streaming a little bit, so I kind of know what each category needs. Anyway, a quick word from our sponsor, and we'll get into it. So love it or hate it, we're seeing Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a few other cryptocurrencies starting to become household names. I actually used to mine crypto back in 2016 and everyone used to tell me that it'd never be profitable, electricity costs are too high, yada yada. They were wrong. Anyway, that's a really long process and if you don't want to get that involved but you are still interested in crypto, that's where an exchange comes in and today we're talking about AAX. They offer a wide range of crypto products and services such as spot on futures trading, fiat crypto exchange service and what's more impressive is their super high yield savings. And that makes this exchange perfect for if you're a fan of passive income. AAX offers up to 60% APY on popular coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stable coins like USDT and USDC. You can just put money in there and earn while you're sleeping. For the techie ones out there, it's also the only exchange powered by LSEG technology. What does it do? It permits you to fill out orders instantly. And if you sign up with the link in the description today, you'll get a 50 USDT new user award. Or you can find out more at AAX. Please, please do your own research before investing in anything, and remember, your capital is always at risk. Let's get back to the video. The first pro I'm going to start off with is aesthetics. Subjective maybe, but I just think it looks far better than two, three monitors. Just having one helps to clean up your desk a lot. You also don't have to worry about matching brand, size of monitor, or getting monitor arms that allow them to line up properly. Nor will you have to pull that annoying other one to the point where it cuts off part of your desk and renders it pretty much useless. Yeah, it, it just looks a lot cleaner to me. To throw it to a con, these monitors are hip. Now, obviously, they vary slightly in weight, but for the most part, they all weigh a lot. This Samsung one here is slightly older, and it comes in at 11.9 kilograms, but from this chart, you can see they range up to 17. Now, if you don't want the stand that comes in the box, because typically they take up a lot of desk space to support a monitor like this, you're gonna want a monitor arm. And here's the problem. Most monitor arms are not rated for this sort of weight, so it gets pretty expensive. The Ergotron HX is what most people pick up for peace of mind. As you can imagine, you spend this much on a single monitor, you don't really want it drooping or the monitor arm failing. But, and you're going to need a chair for this, the Ergotron HX will set you back the best part of £300. Oh, and also, if you have a cheaper particle board IKEA desk, like the Linman Lag Captain, you write it off. It's not going to happen. The monitor arm will just fall through it. I've seen it. There is some light at the end of the tunnel, though. After paying £250, for this monitor used, I wasn't about to go and spend £300 on a monitor arm to support it, so I cheaped out a little. This is a DeLonda single monitor arm. It's a heavy duty one rated for 12 kilograms. Now, the monitor's 11.9, as we said before, which gets pretty close, but it's done all right so far. <laughs> of course, you'll have to pair it with a vase mount adapter because these Samsung ones have a weird mounting system, but apart from bending a little, not bad. Now, for a second pro cable management. I'm just going to touch on this one, but I did think it was worth mentioning. Cable management is a dream compared to running two, maybe even three monitors. One display cable and one power cable and you're done. No sticking multiple power bricks to the back of your Ikea drawers. No cramming loads of cables into your GPU. Some of them are a bit too fat, so it doesn't quite fit. No <laughs> nothing. Fe felt great to get rid of them. And as our second con, I'm going to say lack of utility. What do I mean by this? Well, although this monitor is arguably usable as two, maybe even three screens, you still only have one orientation, one resolution, and one refresh rate. A lot of people, myself included, like to mix and match a bit. A Verti over there, a 4K monitor to the left, a 240Hz gaming monitor in the middle. You get the idea. It's very versatile. You can mix and match and upgrade when you want. Now, if this one super ultra wide monitor doesn't suit what you're trying to achieve, guess what? You can't just use the others. 
that's it. And throwing it to the third pro, we have a bezel-less experience. To counter the lack of utility point, it really is incredible to have one screen that functions as two, maybe even three with the right apps like Power Toys. Even if they are spaced windows, you can choose exactly how to lay them out and really get the most out of this monitor. I sit pretty close to it and find it's far more user-friendly than running a three monitor setup. I guess because of the position, I just would never really be looking over at the third one. It didn't quite feel right. And the third con. This one is specific to 1080p Super Ultra Wide, so if you're looking at a 1440p one, maybe just skip on a bit. The pixel density is quite low, and coming from 1440p screens, 4K screens, you do notice it. Is it impossible to live with? No. Everything is scaled up slightly more because it's a lower res, so you do lose a little bit of screen real estate, but it is usable, even when it comes to typing 11 point text on Word. Maybe I have rosy tinted glasses still, who knows. And as a plus side to this con, less pixels does indeed make the display easier to drive. So if you haven't got the best hardware, and we all know how hard that's been in the past two years, you're in for a treat. All right, so now I've gone over the pros and cons that are general to super ultra wides. Let's go over some points that are specific to you. Should you swap out your monitors for a single super ultra wide if you're a streamer? No, I don't, I don't think you should. And here's why. Most games that launch will take up your entire screen, even if it is for a split second, leaving you unable to see your chat or your stream status. And that doesn't seem too big of a deal yet, but you'll have to run every game in Windows. Unless you want to run this monitor as two split screens, but then that leaves you to look into the left or right for gameplay. Unless there's some app I don't know about. And call this point pedantic if you like, but a lot of streamers like their camera just off to the left or right of their main monitor, and with this it'd need to be far, far to the side. To me, unless there was a way to split this screen with three separate cables into three kind of separate displays, I just don't see it work. Feel free to correct me in the comments if you're a streamer and you do seem to make it work, but I just can't see it being better than one 240Hz gaming monitor and even just one vertical 60Hz for your chat and socials. Not to mention that third that most have as well. Should you pick one of these up if you're a student or you just want a solidly productive setup? If it's at the right price for you, yes. If you're in a lecture online, you can easily have the lecture open, a Word document for notes, and something for research as well. Then when it comes to writing reports, you can have numerous sources of information open, your Word doc, and a podcast to get you through it. It really does make a difference. With Power Toys, you could even try and split it into four if your brain can handle it. And trust me, this or three monitors over a single standard monitor setup or a teeny tiny laptop screen makes a world of it. I probably owe a bit of my grade to how easy my PC setup made everything instead of switching between windows all the time. Quick one as well if you're studying, utilizing different desktops to focus is a lifesaver. You should probably start on that assignment. Now this is a hard one and I would say in general if all you use that PC for is hardcore gaming, even if it's 144 hertz plus, Probably not. Support for this aspect ratio is so-so at best, and even when games do support it, sometimes the HUD doesn't, leaving you like cranking your neck. But when it's done right, it is glorious. Get a story-driven game that supports it and you're having a whale of a time. Your whole FOV is just gay. Especially with some of them super aggressive curved monitors that are coming out now. Anyway, that all sounds great, but the reason I say probably not is because it's not the best at anything. If you play a lot of esports titles, the response time and refresh rate, for the most part, won't be comparable to a solid gaming monitor. And if you love graphically intense gaming, your resolution means a lot and you want to see them crisp details, that's not really there either. And if it was, then I sincerely pay respects to your FPS because that's going to take a lot to drop. Here's the thing, if you casually hop on for a few games alongside using it for studying or productivity, don't let it be a deal breaker. I think it's a sacrifice here, but I do genuinely get on just fine with it playing CS, Fortnite and games like that casually. To round up, after going through the pros and cons and what categories of people it will best suit, should you buy one? Well, it depends who you are. It's all down to your needs and the price you can pick one up for. If, like me, you get super lucky and find a great deal, go for it. Streamer? Probably give it a miss. If you're a student or use it for general productivity, why not? Gamer? Well, if you don't mind running windowed and you crave that super ultra wide experience, go for it. Even though there is some small downfalls, I can personally look past them for the bumping aesthetic and usability for me. And uh, surprisingly, I don't miss my other monitors too much. I can say it's definitely improved my setup with my daily tasks as a content creator and casual gamer. And I think if you can try one, you should. I mean, Amazon's return policy is pretty good. Any questions, guys, please let me know. I appreciate all the support. See ya.